it's Becky and I'm going to do a, an, an update on um, our homeschool progress. Um, I mentioned in my last video that we're going to be doing um, preschool with my youngest and of course this is our, you might have seen the Ikea desk that we have. Um, but a couple things have changed. We did get the bulletin board put up. I just have to decorate it. I got the calendar and all that. Um, so I might do another video about the things we're going to put on there, but that's just I'm lucky to get it hung up. <laughs> There's like no level walls in this house, so it was hard to get it up. But I wanted to show you kind of what we finally figured out for her curriculum. Uh, it's taken me a while to get it organized and figuring out what I want to do. But I'm going to try to try to get it all in this video. Um, like I said, she is going to be doing preschool. She's four. So we have these two pink binders are the um, Confessions of a Homeschooler's letter of the week um, material, which we're going to actually, originally this was the only curriculum I was going to use, but I decided to go ahead and get something a little bit more um, structured and then use this as supplement supplements. So, um, you know, it's got all the letters and there's numbers and graphing, um, yeah, patterns. And she knows, you know, really, she's really good at patterns and stuff, but she really likes doing these activities. So we're going to do this. Um, and there's, you know, puzzle pieces. I just think it's going to be a really good complement to the curriculum that we chose. And both of these pink binders is just that um, letter of the week curriculum. Then she has her calendar um, notebook, which is going to go along with some of the things we have on her bulletin board, like obviously a calendar. We're going to kind of go over that with her and then she can mark the corresponding day in her notebook. So these are the I can write my name. You know, you have them write it every month to see how their progress is on their writing their name. And then these calendars, you know, she'll follow along with me. I'll show her the date on the big calendar and she can mark along the number here that corresponds with whatever day it is. And then um, marking off the corresponding day on this, which is really cute. I'll have to try to leave a link. Well, actually, it's right there. What is it? Oh, it won't focus. It is mamaslearningcorner.com. And I thought these were really cute. Um, so I was excited to find those. These are from Confessions of a Homeschooler. Uh, of course, obviously, it's kind of self-explanatory. You trace the day, the date, you write the number, and then the number word. So I'll have to help her with that a lot in the beginning because she doesn't know all of her numbers and she really can't write that much. Um, the 100 Days of School, that's also Confessions of a Homeschooler, and we'll do some kind of a surprise or field trip or something on that 100th day. But all these months go along like this. The one thing I am going to add, which I don't have yet, is a Bible verse for every week. Um, so in July and August, I'll just pick some random Bible verses, but then once September comes, uh, they start Awana at church. And so um, if you don't know what that is, it's like a daily, you, you go to church um, once a week, the kids learn Bible verses and all different things, and so they have a book that they have to learn their verses from. So what I'll do is, um, once we get her new book in September, I will copy the verse that she's supposed to learn for that week and put it in here, and that way she'll be re she'll she'll get extra reinforcement to learn her Bible verse for Awana. So that would help because I had a hard time remembering to go over her verses with her. But if it's in her daily work, then obviously I'm not going to forget it. So that's going to go in here, which obviously is not in there yet. Um, but this is all the same thing, you know, the whole year. I haven't really found anything else that I'm going to add. This is pretty good. Um, so, but if I find anything new, then I'll let you know. But that's her calendar notebook. And then for her, um, well, for other Bible, we have a couple different things. We have the God and Me Volume 2 Devotions for Girls. And it's got a daily devotion and then questions about the reading and then a little activity to do. So we're going to do that. My older daughter has one of those too. And then we also have whew, the 101 Color and Sing Bible Stories. So a lot of these stories she knows, but I mean you can't really hear it too many times, right? But it's got, tells you what part of the Bible to read, like the, the chapter and the verses. And then it's got kind of a brief um, synopsis of what you know that verse is about there's a cd that goes along with it so there's a song that kind of corresponds to whatever the lesson is a fun fact which is usually really interesting stuff um and then a coloring page so i printed out i only printed out this disc first disc one has 51 lessons and 51 coloring pages 
So I just printed out the first 51 um, just to see if it's something that she's going to enjoy. And then if she does, then when disc two, when we get done with these, then I'll print all the, the pictures for disc two. And for her handwriting, we decided to do handwriting without tears. Um, I, I spent forever looking at videos and reviews and everything. I was like, really? It's not that big of a deal. I mean, in my mind, it's kind of a big deal, though. <laughs> because to me, I feel like you should teach them in alphabetical order because I was worried that she's going to get confused. You know, she knows the ABC song. What if, you know, if she learns them out of order, which is what this book does, I felt like it might confuse her. But I'm, I'm, I'm going on faith that all the great reviews that this program has gotten, um, you know, they know a lot more than I do, so I'm hoping that that's really how it's really going to work out in the end. But they do teach them out of order. Like in the beginning, it's all very basic. And this is the preschool book. Um, you know, it's tracing lines, getting used to that, colors, which, you know, she knows all of her colors. Um, and then it starts, like the very first letter in this book that they learn is, I think it was L, wasn't it? Yeah. It's L. And, you know, they trace this, and they can color the lizard or whatever. And it came with it. You you can buy um, a chalkboard from the Handwriting Without Tears place, but I didn't. I mean, I don't feel that's necessary. I did buy, I did buy the wooden um, sticks, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but, you know, they do L, and then they do F because it's really similar to the L. And E, which is obviously really similar to F. So, I mean, it's, it's, to me, it's kind of counterintuitive, but then when you think about it, it really does make sense. So, we're going to give this a whirl and see how long it takes to get through this book. And they do start numbers towards the end. Um, so, it's not like it's just letters, which is good. So, we have that. And, like I mentioned, it does have the wooden sticks. You have to buy them extra. But I put that in this. This, is, this binder is all alphabet, supplement, kind of more tactile um, activities for her. So these are what I'm going to use for her Play-Doh mats, which Handwriting Without Tears, you can buy special mats and Play-Doh, but we're just going to use these. They roll the Play-Doh up in little ball, like um, like little worm shapes, and then they use it on the letters, um, and she can color that if she wants. Um, but I thought that was good, and I put them in page protectors so she can do them right on there, and then they'll wipe off. So these are all for the Play-Doh art. And then the Handwriting, handwriting Without Tears, like I said, came with these sticks, um, which actually I have... And now they're back here. I don't know that I'm going to keep them back here because if we use them every day, it's kind of hard to get to. But basically use these to make letters. Um, I'm trying to film this and everything at the same time. Okay. So that's what you use those for. And that's what these mats tell you. They show how to make each letter, except for J and G, I think, are the only two that you can't really make with the sticks. But... Shows you how to make the R and the A and the B, and there's some things on the back. If you want, if you have the chalkboard, you can use that. It shows different things that start with A. So that is something we're gonna do every day. And then this is something that I saw a lady do on YouTube. She printed out one of these for every letter of the alphabet, and then so whatever the letter was, they would find an object that started with that letter and put it on, you know, glue it on. Or draw it on and then at the end of the year she kept them all at the end of the year she bound it in a spiral and it was like a memento kind of a thing which I thought was really cute so like if you had D you would do dirt um, I'm not really sure what we're gonna do for some of these but I thought that was really cute and a good idea and again to supplement we're going to use these workbook workbooks that most of them came from the dollar store they're all alphabet and numbers um, so we're going to do all those. Um, this is a frozen word search, which you really can't do, but I can say, like, you know, circle the A's and circle the B's. And I thought it was fun making it, you know, using a frozen one makes it more fun to do. Um, and then numbers. She also has her Mr. Pencil um, for her tag pen. She has Mr. Pencil for her Leapster and her Leap Pad, but this works with the um, tag pen, which we love. And this is all uppercase, lowercase, and handwriting and pencil control. So that should be fun. Ugh, I can't get everything in there. Um, the lined uh, practice paper, and this one's a drawing, right? So you draw the picture and then write the story. A dry erase magnetic board, which has been through it. And then this is the iPikes map which it doesn't work with any of our newer Apple products. It does work with my old um, iPod Touch 4, 
but it's got dogs and cats of the world. It's got the state, you know, the states and a couple other things, uh, solar system. So that's really neat. And if you hook up your iPhone or iPod, then it, it's got an app that you can learn more things um, if you download the app. So I think that's pretty much everything. Those books back there, like I mentioned, are ones that she, I think I mentioned this in the last video. They're ones that she will use um, when she learns all of her alphabet by sight and writing. And then most of her numbers, she'll be able to move on to those, which they're mostly phonics. Um, which actually reminds me, the only other thing we do not have yet is her phonics um, curriculum, which we chose Explode the Code. And it's supposed to come tomorrow, but I wanted to go ahead and film this video tonight since I had a little bit of time. So that's what we're doing for preschool. If I get the bulletin board set up, I will um, try to remember to do a, a quick update on that. And the next thing I have to do is start working on my soon-to-be fifth grader, her curriculum. A lot of it's going to be carryover from last year, but we did add teaching textbooks for, um, for math. And we're going to do something different for her with geography. So I hope this was interesting and helpful. Comment, uh, like, and subscribe if you like videos about homeschooling and curriculum and home things and decor and organizations. A little bit of everything. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.